somebody shout breath and spirit in you and you shall live and you shall know, understand and realize that I am the Lord. Somebody shout he is the Lord. Oh, I'm getting excited. So I prophesied as I was commanding and as I prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking and trembling and rattling and the bones came together. Somebody shall get came together. Uh, bone to its bone. And I looked and behold there were sinews uh, and the flesh came upon them and skin covered them over and there was no breath or spirit in them. I'll get there. Then said he to me prophesy to the breath and spirit son of man and say to the breath and spirit thus says the Lord God come from the four winds oh, come from the four winds O breath and spirit and breathe somebody say and breathe <laughs> upon these slain that they may live so I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath and spirit came into and they lived and stood up uh, upon their feet an exceedingly great army. Uh, anybody getting excited because I'm prophesying. <laughs> then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried up. This is their confession. And our hope is lost and we are completely cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will open up your graves. I will open up your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves, O oh my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Two more verses and we're almost done. And you shall know that I am the Lord. See, we started out with God knowing, now we know. Uh, when I have opened your graves and caused you to come up out of your graves, O oh people, and I shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live. Somebody shall, you shall live. And shall place in your own land. Then you shall know, understand, and realize that I, the Lord, have spoken it, performed it, says the Lord. As you sit in your seat, I want you to declare there's victory in this valley. Somebody yell it real strong. There's victory. One more time. Seven great valleys, Sidon, Esco. 
Jericho, Kidron, Eli, Echo, Gahana, and Jezreel. Y'all want to go down this history lesson with me? All right. <laughs> In our text, we find a prophet by the name of Ezekiel, whose name means strengthened by God, which indeed he was for the prophetic ministry to which God had called him. Ezekiel uses visions, prophecies, parables, signs, and symbols to proclaim and dramatize the message of God to his exiled people. He was 25 when taken captive and 30 when called into ministry. And at this point in our text, the Babylonians have conquered Israel and brought the temple down in ruin, capturing Jerusalem and sending Israel into exile because of their own disobedience and sin against God. Thousands of Jews were killed and placed into 70 or more years of tribulation and exile. The Bible says that the hand of the Lord comes upon Ezekiel and he brought him out into the spirit and set him down in the valley. Valleys have a rich history of physical, spiritual, and cultural significance. Many of the world's civilizations were developed in valleys, and stories in historical and spiritual texts have used valleys as uh, symbolisms. And as I stated before, there are seven main valleys that are spoken about in Scripture. The Valley of Siddam, which represents sin and wickedness. The Valley of Esco, which is the Valley of Decision. The Valley of Kidron, which is the Valley of Suffering. The Valley of Elah, which is the Valley of the Battle. The Valley of Achor, which is the Valley of Punishment or Discipline. The Valley of Gehenna, or the Valley of Death. And I have to give y'all some definition. The Valley of Gehenna was the garbage dump of Jerusalem. There was a fire going on there at the time. And when our Lord spoke about hell, he said there shall be an eternal Gehenna. <laughs> the valley of Jezreel, which is the valley of triumph. The valley of Jezreel is significant as scripture tells us this is where the end time battle will be fought. And then there is Ezekiel's valley. Ezekiel's valley presents another scene of a valley of transformation that provided hope for the future. So God takes Ezekiel from a natural place of trauma, pain, and destruction into a valley. Now y'all, let's talk here for a second because now if, if it was just a valley, I think Ezekiel would have been all right. If it was just a valley that you were facing, I think you would be all right. If it was just a low place that you were looking at uh, and surrounded by, I feel like you would be all right. But the, the Bible says that he's in a valley of dry, very dry bones. Ooh, he's surrounded by calamity. He's surrounded by destruction. He was in trauma, but now he's in a place of, that looks to be as if it is an open or exposed grave. He was surrounded uh, by decaying bodies. He was surrounded uh, by decomposed bodies. He was surrounded by a valley full of defeat. Who am I talking to? God has placed you in a valley and the valley does not look like you. God has placed you in a place and the place that you are in looks more uh, worse than how you feel. Mm, he was surrounded by a valley full of death. He was surrounded by a valley full of impossibility. Ah, he was surrounded by a valley full of lifelessness. He was surrounded by a valley full of foes. The only thing living as he stood there was Ezekiel. Ah, surrounded by nothing but death. Surrounded by nothing but drama. Surrounded by nothing but pain. Surrounded by dead situations. When I studied this text, brother, I found that it was customary and considered honorable for the dead to be buried in ancient Israel. An unburied corpse with exposed remains was a shocking disgrace to the dead. These bones 
were obviously denied proper proper burial and left exposed. Uh, Oh, you are surrounded by the exposed stuff. Oh my God. So here he stands in the valley full of dry, disgraced bones and open graveyard full of what could have been, what should have been, what would have been. Unlike Lot's wife who became a pillar of salt because she looked back after God had told her not to, these bones were still redeemable. She was not, he was not in a place that God could not heal. He was not in a place that God could not fix. He was in a place that looked as if it was dead, but it still was able to be redeemed. The bones represented the fallen men, but they also represented possibility. Uh, you might not see whatever you're dealing with uh, as something that can be restored. I don't know who I'm talking to. You might not see uh, your situation uh, as something uh, that can live again. Uh, you might not think uh, that things have gotten as bad as they're going to get. Uh, you might not see this valley that you're in uh, as something that God can use to get glory. But just because it's dead uh, doesn't mean it's done.
Ezekiel had no hope in the bones, but he did have hope in God. Ezekiel did not presume to know what God wanted to do with the bones. Ezekiel was confident that God knew what he wanted to do with what remained. Somebody shout, God knows what to do. Ezekiel didn't know what to do. He was placed there to be used by God, not to be God. He's talking to the all-knowing, uh, all-sufficient, all-powerful, omnipresent God. Surely God is not asking Ezekiel because he does not know. He's asking him because he wants to show him what he can do with what he can't see. Ezekiel does the most appropriate thing and responds, Lord, you know. Uh, Ezekiel was confident that God did know. God does not work from our present. He is already in our future. This may have caught you by surprise, but it has not caught God by surprise. Somebody shout, he is before me. Uh, even in the impossible of situations, he is still the God of your outcome. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to do it. He knows what we need. He knows what we desire. He knows what's broken. He knows what's dead. He is well aware of your situation. Somebody shout, he knows, he knows, he knows. And when you don't know what to do, what to say, or where to go, trust the one that does. The Bible says it this way in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, trust in the Lord. Uh, with all your heart and lean not to, to your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Uh, this next few verses that the, the passage of scripture deals with, Ezekiel begins to receive instruction for the valley. Uh, uh, he gets instruction, he's obedient, and he sees results. He says so I prophesied as I was commanded. I'm about to get in trouble, so I'm going to close my eyes right here. Uh, but I have to say this sometimes. Uh, the reason why we don't see manifestation uh, or the movement of God uh, over what we are dealing with, uh, praying for or believing God for, uh, is because we have not allowed God uh, to speak to us concerning the matter. Uh, we have not been obedient uh, to what he has told to do. So we can't see the results. We haven't been saying what he's saying. Ezekiel gives us a, a, a solution to the valley. He says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied and then there was a noise. I prophesied
he felt. And suddenly he heard, he saw, and he felt. If prophecy don't move you as the prophet, you need to figure out if you're really a prophet. It's supposed to come to you first. He said, I heard it. I felt it. And I saw it. He didn't wait for the audience to confirm.
prophet positioned in it. You can prophesy uh, to it. If you are assigned to it, you are anointed for it. You might not know how it's going to work, but somebody shout, it's coming together. The first word that God gives Ezekiel was to bring order to the scattered, disgraced, and discarded bones. The second word, however, that God gives is for life and strength. He says to Ezekiel, call for the winds. Now Ezekiel was told to call upon the breath so that the breath would come on these slain that they may live. The previous verses and prophecy left the valley reconnected, remembered bodies, and they were still dead. Somebody shout, they were connected but still dead. I know we can't look at a neighbor, but shout out, don't stop at it just coming together. Prophesy until it stands up. Prophesy and speak to it until it comes back to life. Speak to it until it starts to walk. Speak to it until it's resurrected. Speak to it until it's revived. God uh, does not just empower you to speak to what you see, but he's giving you power to prophesy to what you don't. He says prophesy to the wind.
about what God will do uh, for these bones and this nation. But the result of all he speaks is that you shall live. I'm going to say it again. God, because they didn't hear me. You shall live. the bones come back together. Yeah. After the sinews come back to the bones. After the skin is on the bones. After they've regard, or re uh, remembered and come back to identity and formation. And even after it is alive. The Bible says that God says you shall live. It's already living. But he's not speaking to what he sees. He's speaking to what he does not see. Because later on in the text about the graves opening up. And I said, God, what do these graves represent? He said, the bones represented the army, but the graves represent the nation. What am I saying to you? You prophesy to what you see, and I'll take care of what you don't. You prophesy to what I'm showing you, what's visible, and I'll take care of the future. How the nation represented the people coming Ready to be 
anybody want to be used? As I started out, I said that the Lord gave me this word for the Ezekiel's and for the bones. You got to identify yourself. Are you the one that God wants to use to speak to what you see? Or are you the one that God is getting ready to bring back to life? Some of us have misinterpreted our valley. We have called it a place of judgment. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. We have called it a place of being forgotten, being left out, being left over. But don't misinterpret your valley. This is the place that God is going to use to give you the victory. Because you have to be able to hear 
on ears that you have shut out to what God is saying. Because of disappointment, the Lord said. Uh, because you did not see it happen in the time that you prayed. You did not see the turnaround in the time that God, uh, you thought God, God, surely you would have done it by now. Uh, and this has had you in a place where you cannot hear for your future. It's frustrated you so to where you go to write and you can't write. Uh, you go to pray and you can't pray. Uh, I'm sure about your soul yeah. But the Lord says I'm sending a personal revival uh, to your heart. Uh, I'm sending a personal revival uh, to your ears uh, that you may begin to hear uh, what I am saying. Uh, you, my daughter, have misinterpreted not just this valley, uh, but you've misinterpreted this season. Uh, God said I'm not punishing you. So that you 
can speak and declare what I am saying. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that you have spoken to us, to our hearts, to our minds, to our spirits. This is not up to death. Lift your hands, Lord of God. This is not up to death. I don't know what you are dealing with. Oh, whatever it is, God said it's not up to death.